In much of the world, we've been going through a housing crisis for years now. Rent prices are in the sky, swallowing more and more of our salaries. Worse, owning a home is increasingly becoming a distant, impossible dream for younger generations. Meanwhile, private developers, unless regulated otherwise, put up mostly luxury units, even though what's really needed is affordable housing on a large scale. If we put up tens of thousands of affordable units in an affected city, that would ease the housing crisis. But it would also cut significantly into real estate companies' bottom line. Imagine if Vonovia's average selling and rent prices per square meter dropped by half. That would mean happy tenants, relieved family budgets, and absolutely furious investors. All this is to say, private developers alone will not solve the problem. Without any meaningful, large-scale public intervention, the housing crisis is here to stay. Or is it? What's this? A ray of hope, a light in the darkness, a Tesla burning bright in the night, showing us the way. Confirmed genius Elon Musk is here to lead us out of the housing crisis with his cheap, prefabricated, epic future homes. Or is he? Well, stay tuned. If we're talking affordable housing, Elon Musk is your man. As Musk fans point out every single time, whether anyone asks him or not, Elon Musk is not your average billionaire. Instead of the usual gigantic mansion, he lives in a small, modest, $50,000 prefab home. So he obviously understands the plight of the common masses having descended to them. What a saint. That's the legend, anyway. According to various sources, Musk mostly lives in Austin, in the mansion of his billionaire friend. In the meantime, he's also been shopping around the city for his own gigantic luxury compound. So there's that. But no matter, Elon Musk is here to solve the housing crisis, so let's not look a gift emerald mine in the mouth. Elon Musk fan channels promise nothing less than a le epic 420 Marvel vibranium $10,000 affordable home. Wow! But the problem is, in true Elon Musk fashion, these tiny, futuristic, prefab affordable homes will not solve the housing crisis. If anything, they could actually make it worse. Also, they aren't real, but we'll get to that. How is that possible? Let's find out. After I recover from the brain damage I got from watching some of these videos, the sheer amount of dick riding, Jesus Christ. Elon Musk, the man behind this innovative home, is dedicated to reducing his carbon footprint and promoting sustainability in all aspects of his life. Towing the house with a Tesla Cybertruck makes more sense in my opinion because of its increased towing capability. This would probably be the most time and fuel efficient option. The interdependence of Tesla products is truly something to marvel at. It's a tech lover's dream come true. Elon Musk fans will be the end of me. But as I spiral into insanity, at least my body's daily needs are properly met by AG1. AG1 is a whole food, daily dietary supplement containing 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. It's gluten and dairy free, low calorie, and vegan. AG1 is unique as it's one of the most comprehensive supplements on the market right now. And it's made with the highest quality ingredients. Preparing it is very easy. Just put a spoonful into your glass of water, mix, and done. AG1 has a mild, pleasant taste and a nice texture. It supports your immune system, maintains your energy level, and boosts your body's natural recovery process. It's especially useful if you do training or any other heavy physical exercise. Personally, since I started taking AG1 in the morning, generally I've been feeling better and healthier and more energetic. All in all, I'm satisfied with AG1, which means I can genuinely recommend it to my viewers. Get yourself a pack of AG1 using the link in the description and enjoy its benefits to your mind and body today. Thank you for checking out AG1. Ads like this help support me in creating more content for you. And now, back to the video. So, Elon Musk's $10,000 affordable homes, which will apparently help solve the housing crisis. And why they absolutely won't. Elon Musk meat rider channels help popularize this idea that Musk is creating an affordable $10,000 futuristic home. And these videos got quite popular, garnering hundreds of thousands of views, one of them going as high as 12 million. They all claim to present Elon Musk's epic affordable tiny home. This online cult consists of two sects, the $15,000 Tesla home evangelists and the church of the $50,000 tiny home. Let's take a look at the letter first. Just $50,000 for what looks like a shipping container with windows? Sign me the hell up. So when will Elon Musk be shipping these things? How many thousands of hours of planning did this genius have to sink into this incredible project? How many tens of thousands are Tesla factories churning out right as we speak? Zero. On both counts. Elon Musk has nothing to do with this. This is the Casita accessory dwelling unit from a company called Boxable. What's Elon Musk's connection to it? According to Meat Rider channels, he lives in a Casita in Texas. And this is complete bullshit. How do I know? Because Elon Musk tweeted as much. Uh, I've, I've actually been uh, li living living in a uh, $50,000 house in uh, South, uh, South South Texas for past two years. Uh, not, 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 not boxable. 
uh, cool, cool product though. This tidbit of course didn't stop the meat writers from misleadingly calling it Elon Musk's $50,000 home. Anything for those views I guess. By the way, it's called the Casita Accessory Dwelling Unit because it's not supposed to be a standalone home. Accessory dwelling units or ADUs are supposed to be attached to or next to a regular house. So I don't know why they're pretending this is supposed to be a standalone thing. Anyway. So how about that $15,000 Tesla home then? There it is, nicely visualized, looking sleek and futuristic. And it's complete bullshit. This does not exist. As far as I can tell, the originator was the channel called Elon Musk Rewind, a particularly prolific misinformation hub run by some ATIQ cloud chaser. And man, when it comes to chasing views, this channel is more desperate than your high school female friend's 40-year-old boyfriend. Elon Musk officially bought Mercedes. He didn't. Elon Musk is producing combat bots to beat Russia. He isn't. Elon Musk just revealed Tesla Model Pi official release date. He did no such thing. Despite all this sweaty, desperate cloud chasing, most of these videos don't even break 100,000 views, which is pretty funny. But they did manage to fart out two videos in late 2021 and early 2022, which became massively popular, both of them about the supposed Tesla home. And in both of these videos, they talk about something completely different. Namely, the aforementioned $50,000 home. Okay, but then what are those tiny holes on the thumbnail? They even have the Tesla logo on, so they must be some super secret high IQ Elon Musk project. Actually, that's the Cube 2 mobile home by Nestron, a company with which Elon Musk once again has absolutely nothing to do with. What is it doing in all those thumbnails? Clickbait. That's it. Just clickbait. Elon Musk Rewind googled futuristic tiny home, then took the first image result, put a Tesla logo.png on it and plastered it all over his videos. And this dude really just can't help himself. Two days before we recording this, he released the same video for the third time, once again with the Nestron Cube 2 on the thumbnail, with the obligatory clickbaity title, once again showing the boxable casita in the actual video, with a metric ton of stock footage and the obligatory meat riding. Right next to his SpaceX company, it's a small but cozy space that Eli calls home. But with five teenagers from his first marriage, including twins who are 18 years old and triplets who are 16 years old, you might be wondering how he manages to fit everyone in such a small house. Seeing the success of Elon Musk Rewind's original two videos, other cloud sharking channels went absolutely berserk and started manufacturing the same video over and over again about the supposed $15,000 Tesla home to cash in on the interest. They put out video after 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 video about the supposed $15,000 Tesla home. They even copied each other's titles and thumbnails. Just this one channel called Elon Musk Zone has made 15 videos to date covering the same subject. Meanwhile, over here in reality, the only thing Tesla ever created in terms of housing was the Tesla Tiny Home, a small trailer they toured around Australia a bit some years ago, which was just a small demonstrator for their solar energy products. So okay, Elon Musk is not building affordable homes. He does not own a boxable home and he has nothing to do with either boxable or Nestron. But what if he did? What if Elon Musk really entered the affordable tiny home market and started selling them for $15,000? Would that solve the housing crisis? No. God no. Jesus H. Christ on a bicycle no. And why is that? A few things. Let's imagine you got a brand new futuristic tiny home for free. Living in an expensive city and spending two thirds of your paycheck on rent, you cannot believe you finally get to own your own home. Your phone vibrates. You get an email from the delivery company. We're on the way with your brand new affordable futuristic tiny home. Please enter the address of your plot. Plot? Oh, I guess you need to buy a place to put your brand new tiny home. You could get some cheap land outside the city. I mean outside the city. Which, if you don't mind a 2 plus hour daily car commute per direction, or the lack of broadband internet and possibly drinking water, it's just a place for you. So here we see the first big contradiction of tiny, affordable homes. Namely, that in urban areas where they're most needed, plots and land are also incredibly expensive. And in areas where plots are cheap, houses and apartments will be cheap too. And at that point, why even bother with your tiny home? Just get a regular one at a low price. The other big contradiction of these affordable tiny homes is their scalability. These things aren't designed to be stacked on top of each other en masse. So if you have, say, a hectare of building plot that's 10,000 square meters, you could fit 96 of these tiny homes on it, each of them being a 6 meter by 6 meter cube plus a little garden area. But cities also have these things called parking regulations, which means you need to have X amount of parking per unit in this case. How many you need varies from area to area, but let's say here it's one to one. That's 16 tiny homes gone replaced by parking, leaving 
hitting us with 80, though that still sounds like a decent number. However, this same area could fit 92 row houses with 184 households in them, possibly more depending on how high you build. That's more than double the units. Okay, you might say, but what if we then put these tiny homes real close together to increase density? Which, yeah, it's called a refugee camp. What a great idea. We could even have a bunch of these at the edges of town and we could organize these fun competitions between them. Every year, each tiny home district chooses a champion, then all champions are put together in a fighting arena of sorts where they battle each other to the death. The last surviving champion and the district they represent could then win some fun prizes like Amazon vouchers or something. Joke aside, or is it really a joke at this point? I don't know. Anyway, the other tiny home, the Nestron Cube 2, is just a fancy trailer. So with these two tiny homes, if you take away all the fancy futuristic bullshit and the tech bro hype, your two choices are either living in a refugee camp or in a trailer park. I don't know about you, but that's not how I envision living my life. And the tragic thing is, these companies don't bring anything new to the table. Let's take the $50,000 boxable home as an example. I looked up the websites of some local hardware stores, and wow, would you look at that, they too seem to be in the business of revolutionizing home affordability or something. For half the price, you can get an entire house from this epic, eco-friendly, renewable material called wood. And they'll even deliver it to you for free, compared to boxables $3 to $10 per mile from Las Vegas. Granted, you would need to spend some money on plumbing and insulation, but in the end it would still be cheaper. These hardware storehouses have been available for many years and yet they didn't solve the housing crisis anywhere. That's because these tiny, affordable houses are fundamentally unable to do so for the reasons we've discussed. They need land, which tends to be expensive where housing is needed, and they scale horribly, housing only a fraction of the people on a given plot that a normal apartment building would. So what are the actual solutions to the housing crisis? Here the ultimate solution would be a large-scale, state-run public housing construction project, but this is rather unlikely likely in most places given our current political climate. Instead, what could also help is the elimination of parking minimums. Those dense, lively American row house neighborhoods or those old, beautiful European residential districts would be illegal to build today pretty much everywhere because they don't have enough parking spaces. If, however, we got rid of these requirements and said that buildings within, say, 400 meters of a tram, metro or train stop do not need to have any parking spaces, suddenly the cost of building new housing would go down because you wouldn't need to construct expensive underground parking garages or parking houses. Through this, more smaller players could enter the real estate market as the cost barrier is lower, meaning you would get a healthier real estate market not dominated by just a few large players. Though as I said in the beginning, these companies are not really interested in solving the housing crisis. Letting private developers loose alone will not solve the problem. However, it can at least improve the situation from disastrous to bad, which would be a useful step one. Of course, housing prices depend on factors other than supply and demand as well, such as income. If people in an area earn a lot of money, landlords can get away with charging a lot more. This means units will remain affordable for those high salaried professionals, but everyone else gets priced out. Here, rent control can help or creating public housing for essential workers. So for example, the city buys up some apartments around the center and then rents them out at minimal prices to essential workers like teachers, nurses, garbage collectors and so on, who otherwise couldn't afford to live within practical distance of their own workplaces necessary for the basic functioning of the city. If the garbage collector has to commute 4 hours per day to get to their workplace, you will not have a garbage collector. That sort of thing. Other possible measures include the heavy regulation of short-term rentals, and forcing developers to build more affordable housing within a given project. And of course, if politically feasible, large-scale affordable public housing projects. Tiny homes just won't get us out of this mess. We will not solve the housing crisis with edge-of-town trailer parks or tech pro refugee camps, no matter how futuristic they look. We need public intervention, and we need it yesterday. That is, bold measures from our leaders, up to and including large-scale public housing construction projects. So do look up your local political parties, what they have done and what they plan on doing to alleviate the housing crisis. Limiting Airbnb, instituting a rent ceiling, expanding social housing, that sort of thing. So this was my take on these futuristic affordable homes. Thank you for watching, and if you want to support me making more content like this, you can either become a member on YouTube or support me on Patreon. And I'll be seeing you next time. Kitty, what do you think of futuristic trailer parks? Kitty, what do you think of large-scale public housing? <laughs>